afternoon, everyone. Thank goodness I have Deacon Rob. He reminded me that my homily was still over there. I would have forgotten it. That's why I need a lot of help. This is my last homily as your pastor, and I, I want to, I want to speak three words of farewell, and also from our gospel, speak of three important lessons to the Christian life. First word of farewell is this, sorrow. Sorrow, and I don't mean that just simply the sorrow that is in my heart leaving, that is true, very true and very deep. But also sorrow in the sense of, I think this is going to be difficult and it's true, but also sorrow in the sense of, I'm sorry. I think it's important whenever I leave any place to certainly express my sorrow that if any way I have not been a good pastor, if anything that I have said or did that may have hurt anyone or was inappropriate or that I didn't help you with, I'm sorry. I'm comforted by the fact that even Pope Francis says in describing himself, I am a sinner whom the Lord has looked upon. And I would like to certainly take that motto to myself. I am a sinner whom the Lord has looked upon with his mercy. And I'm sorry if my sinfulness has hurt you. But the second word I have is a word of thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be your pastor. Thank you for letting me into your lives, allowing me through my priestly ministry to serve you. At times we look in our culture and we see that many people kind of exist in a culture of entitlement. And we all fall into that mistake of thinking that we deserve things rather than living in a culture of gift that we have received all good things from God our Father and that life itself is a gift you have been a gift to me and I thank you and I thank Almighty God for the privilege to have been your pastor and the final word is the word prayer. Please pray for me. Pray that I might be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. That I might be a loyal son of his mother, Mary. And a loyal son of his body, the church. I believe that if only your prayer for me is fulfilled, if I can truly be a faithful disciple of Christ, a loyal son of his mother, and a loyal son of his body of the church, it's only then that I can be a good shepherd and a good father to those seminarians that I go to serve. So please, I'm sorry. Thank you. And pray for me. And now I come to what I must come to, what I'm compelled to do, what a priest must always be, and that is someone who proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is not about me. It's not about us. It is about him. It is about the power of his word and his sacrament. It is the very reason for the priesthood. And so I proclaim briefly and finally here with the words of the Gospel of St. John that Deacon Rob read. This beautiful Gospel, which by the way mentions a disciple named Andrew. I don't know if the Lord's trying to tell me something, but 
but a gospel that points to the very heart of the priesthood itself and at the center of our spiritual lives and our parish, and that is the Eucharist. This great miracle of the loaves and fish is a prefigurement of what our Lord will later give at the Last Supper, the giving that we celebrate at every Mass, the giving of himself and the form of bread and wine that are changed into his body and blood. But there are three lessons that I would like to leave with you from this Gospel passage that I believe speak to the very heart of what it means to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. First of all, we are told that as this crowd gathered around our Lord, Jesus turns and says to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? St. John will tell us, the Lord knows what he's going to do. He knows ahead of time he's going to perform this miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fish. But then why does he ask this question of Philip and the disciples? Why does he say, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? Herein lies a very important lesson. And that is that our Lord wants them and us to be a part of his mission. To cooperate with him. It has been a special privilege to be so as a priest. And I humbly ask that you consider your discipleship of Jesus Christ as a participation in his mission, in his presence, in spreading his gospel, living his life, extending his love and grace. Where can we buy enough food for them to eat, Philip? In other words, how can you solve this problem? How can you and I be a part of the extension of the kingdom of God? How can you and I be an instrument of the very presence of Christ, his word, his power, his grace, his goodness, his love? Our God is not a God who does everything for us, and that's all. No, our God is a God who wants us to actually cooperate with him and be his instruments in the world. The lesson is this. He wants us to be holy as he is holy. He has called each and every one of us to an intimate participation in his life and his holiness. He wants you, yes, you, to be a disciple, an apostle, a saint. He wants you to answer that question, where can I buy enough food for them to eat? Then the second lesson comes a few sentences later. Andrew, trying to impress our Lord, but at the same time telling us that he doesn't quite grasp what the Lord is going to do, comes and says, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. Now right now, Andrew's okay. Right? Sounds like a good response. But then he fails me when he says, but what good are these for so many? Right? He kind of gives up, the poor guy. I think we would all do the same. What good is this little bit, Lord? Yes, I have this boy here. Yes, he has something. But what in the world can we do with it? We give what seems to be small, insignificant, unimportant, we might even think that we are that way, small and significant and unimportant. But what is little and offered to the Lord Jesus Christ in his hands can become the source of a great miracle. You are valued and loved to the very point of death on the cross. You are nothing small in God's eyes. You are great. And what you, you and I offer him, he can use. Your words, your work, your family, your relationships, your friendships. All of the many virtues that you attempt to live in your life, even though no one may see your patience and your temperance and your justice and your joy, it doesn't matter. 
the Lord takes even the smallest offering, if offered out of love for him, and can and does do, he does great things with it. The lesson is this. That God has called us not to be successful in the eyes of the world, but just be faithful to the little things. And in the little things, God will perform miracles. He takes those few fish and loaves of bread and multiplies them beyond the dreams of Andrew and the other apostles. He feeds his flock with the little that's offered him. Let's give ourselves even the little things, and especially those things, to him. And then, as we hear in St. John's Gospel, he takes these loaves, he gives thanks, and he distributes them. As I said, God does great things. He continues to do great miracles with the little that we can offer him. Christ always takes what we offer and always multiplies it. And if you notice, when our Lord took what they offered him, he first gave thanks. This, as the scripture scholars will tell us, should remind us of what he will do at the Last Supper. The wording here in St. John's Gospel is similar to what Matthew, Mark, and Luke use to describe Jesus taking bread taking wine, giving thanks, saying those words, this is my body, this is my blood, and then distributing and offering it to his apostles. The lesson is this, my brothers and sisters. When you come to worship the Lord, remember that you come to witness a miracle. If there's one thing that we need to hear over and over again, is that the Lord has not abandoned us. He is truly with us, present in the Eucharist. He comes here to feed us once again at every Mass. This is the reason we come. It's not for a homily. It's not for the beautiful music. It's not simply, although this is great, to be with one another, praising each other. But ultimately, it is for him. It is to receive him. It is to worship him and to bring his presence to the world. Go in peace. And that going means us taking the very Lord we receive in Holy Communion to the farthest corners and peripheries of our lives so that we too can distribute him into the world as its light, its leaven, its salt. Remember the Lord is truly present. Receive him often and then distribute him. Bring him to the world in most need of his presence. So how do I end? I end simply by saying that I I don't know whether I have been a good pastor. I don't know. And I won't know until I see all of you in heaven. If that happens, if I get there first, if you are there, then I know I have been a success as the pastor of the cathedral parish. So I leave you with a brief blessing along your way to heaven, that this blessing might accompany you and might be with you until we see each other again. May God watch over you and protect you. May his face shine upon you and give you his peace. May you rejoice in his presence all the days of your life. And if we do not meet again in this life, may we meet in the next, giving eternal praise and honor to God 
in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.